What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. For the first time in over six months, the Mustang has left the garage, which left me with a space open. Marcus just went to go take his car for a quick shakedown, doing some street driving, making sure that everything we change is working because he has a track day, a drift day coming up next weekend. I immediately drove in the garage and stole the space from him. My DS series BC coilovers just came in today. So, in today's video, we're gonna be putting some coilovers on the drift vet. Alrighty, well, here are the coilovers. We got the fronts, which are 7K, and the rears, which are 10K spring rates. So we're gonna start with the front of the car, and then we'll do the rears next. So let's start taking off all the old suspension components, and then we'll start putting on the new stuff. Oh, oh my God. Get a race car, they said. Get a race car, they said. It'd Easy be, to work on, they said. Fun, they said. Apparently whoever put these on last impacted these to the moon. All right, where's that adapter? So we literally just broke a half inch to three eighths adapter. Yeah, right there, can you guys see it? Focus, focus. So we got another one. If this one breaks, I only have one more. This is where we do, when we death wheel, the wheel off and leave the spokes on. That still wouldn't solve our problem. I know. Go. Just accidentally put it on tight. Do it all over again. All right, so here we go. We're diving into it. Come take a look in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the sway bar end link off. I'm undoing the upper control arm mounts on both sides. And then there's a nut right here at the top of the strut. And then there's two nuts down here on the bottom of the strut. See them? Right here, down here at the bottom. Three bolts holding the strut on so we can get the strut off. And then after we do that, we can take this leaf spring out. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start here and unfortunately, the farther we dig into it, I'm seeing more parts that need to be replaced, so. Strobe light the camera for the fans. Whoa. Hope you guys aren't epileptic. It was a lot of work, but we got the transverse leaf spring out. Finally. So there's two brackets underneath the car that go right here and right here. So four bolts, I unbolted that. And then these are pads that just sit on the lower control arm and push against it. This must adjust spring preload. So I just backed that up a little bit so I could get it out. I had to drop the knuckles down as far as they could go in order to get this spring out. So I'm just using a ratchet strap to hold it so I don't put too much uh, weight on my brake lines because I don't want to pop those. So yeah, I just had to lower the both uh, knuckles as far down as possible. So now that that is done, it's time for the first set of coils to go in. So I'm gonna check my ride height. BC says, says that they're set to the stock ride height right now. So I'm gonna absolutely slam these and then we'll put them in the car. So I slammed it. I screwed this cap as far down as it will go and then I took it one rotation back up so it's not bottoming out, tightened it up, I'm gonna leave the spring preload as it is for right now, but this one's ready to go in the car. And I put anti-season on the threads so that way she doesn't lock up on me. Got the nut in on top. I just have it hand tighted on so I can start putting everything back together now. These are the old Swearer men links. These are completely shot. So, went to the parts store today. They got some new ones. Not only are they fresher, but they're also beefier. The stock sway arm end links for the Corvettes are actually made out of plastic. This is not. This is a nice metal sway bar end link. So, we're gonna be putting these in too. Check out that new sway bar end link. Looking pretty good in there.
Alrighty guys, so this side is done. I got the coolant reservoir back in place. I got the top of the BC coilover tight. I got the control arm back in. I got the tie rod back in. The new sway arm end link is in. I got the bottom of the coil mounted to the lower control arm and I adjusted the dampening right there at the bottom of the coilover. At 15, there's 30 dampening settings and I picked 15 so it's right in between hard and soft. So that's what it looks like with the new BC coil over in there. Looks pretty good. So now, I just need to repeat everything that I just did on the other side of the car. Making progress. All right, so before I put the coil in the car, I actually take this lower portion off, or technically this is the front shock, this is the upper hat. I take this off and I put anti-seize on all these threads. So that way if I ever have to adjust my ride height later on, I will have no problem doing that and these won't be seized. So right now BC sets uh, the coilover to be at the factory ride height of the car. And I need about two inches, so I'm gonna slam this all the way down as far as I can. So I'm gonna lower this as far down as possible. And if I need to race the car later, I'll go back in and raise it up. But we're gonna start off by slamming it. So let's do that. Now I gotta put the bolts back in for this. Uh, I don't even really know what this is called, but it basically just measures the distance that the upper control arm travels. You can see it's connected up here to the top of the upper control arm. It's got a little lever and it just measures the movement of the upper control arm. So three bolts, two on the left, one on the right. Sweet. So we got this side done too. Got the washer fluid tank back in there. Tighten the top of the BC coil over. Got everything put back together. New sway arm end link on this side as well. Tie rods back in. We're looking good. So now we can finally move on to the back of the car. Come take a look. What do you think? It's perfect. Ooh, that is pretty nice. I don't even think I'll have to adjust it. I'm gonna be. So much lower. <laughs> I was like two and a half inches, three inches. Yeah, oh guys, this is our first time looking at. It. We still have the back to do, right? So ignore the back, but it's low. Ooh. Passes a shoe test. What do you think, dude? Yes. <laughs> Bryce did the same thing. Yes, Immediately went for the shoe test. <laughs> Wow, it looks so much better. It is low. Doesn't it seem so much, like just walking up to it, it seems so much lower. Yeah. yeah. Like come here, it's just like, you're not going for the kneecaps anymore. Your ankle biting. Yeah. Dude, it Dude, looks good. Perfect. All right, now I just gotta hustle and get the back done. Alrighty, so it's a new day and we're getting close to finishing the coilover install. Well, actually I finished it and I took it for a test drive, but I'm gonna show you guys the rear suspension right now. So I did the rears really quick because I wanted to drive it and go to Woodward. So this is what we're working with here. So this is the rear suspension all done. So you see we got the BC coilover in, two bolts on the top and then it bolts to the lower control arm here at the bottom. In order to get it in, I had to take out the tie rod or the trailing arm. Just to make it easier, I would take the sway bar and link off so you can lower uh, the control arms down as low as possible to get the transverse leaf spring out. Now, the transverse leaf spring usually goes right here in the front, but I already took mine out. And it bolts in right here on the lower control arm, on both sides. So, unbolt that, unbolt the trailing arm, unbolt the sway bar end link, and replace them if your uh, ball joints are bad. I have replaced mine. Lower the hub or the suspension as low as possible, remove the transverse leaf spring, and then you're good to go. And then you can just put the, the coilover in. If you guys are wondering, 
for all four BC racing coilovers, I lowered them as much as possible. So this car is completely slammed right now. So this is the coil in the front and you can see I have it slammed. I have like maybe a couple threads left to go. So I have the front slammed and I have the rear completely slammed as well. So um, I wish I took a picture of the car completely slammed. It looks really, really good and it's really, really low to the ground. However, I am rubbing a little bit in the rear, so I'm gonna go up about half, a, half an inch. The front is good to go. Um, it does not rub, so I'm gonna leave the front how, is it, how it is, but I am gonna raise the rear a little bit. So I'll, do, I'll raise the rear a quarter inch. So when you guys see this thing on the ground, just know that the rear has a quarter inch to go if you guys wanna lower yours more. So the reason I started with the car completely slammed is because I wanted to drive it around a little bit and let the suspension really settle in before I knew where the ride height was gonna be. Sure enough, after driving, the, the rear settled probably about a quarter inch or a half inch more than where it was right after I installed them and dropped it on the ground. The front stayed about where it was at. I would say maybe a quarter inch, maybe. So if you guys wanna slam your cars, you can, it's drivable, but let me show you what to expect if you drive your car completely slammed. So again, I only did 100 miles and you can see I'm rubbing on the inside of the wheel liner here. It's a little bit more significant towards the top and a little bit more significant towards the rear. So. Um, unfortunately, some of the car body panels do bolt to this inner liner. So if I was to get rid of this inner liner, which would be the next option to have more clearance, you could, you would just have to figure out a new fastening situation for some of the Corvette body parts. So all in all, I think it's okay. And if you guys have a smaller tire than I do, you probably get away with it. I just have such a big tire in the rear that um, it's rubbing. So just food for thought take my experience and do whatever you guys want with it. Now that we have the suspension installed, I came across an entirely different problem. So once I started the car and I obviously disconnected the Magna ride because I got rid of the old struts that were in the car. I got an error that said uh, suspension inoperable, something like that. And then the next error right after it was max speed limit 80 miles an hour. That's not gonna fly. So I had to do some research and sure enough, it does. It cuts um, spark at 80 and it won't let you go any faster. So big sad, I had to hop on the forums and luckily I was able to figure it out with the help of some Corvette owners. So I went online and I purchased a 10 watt, 10 ohm wound resistor. That's very important. It needs to be a wound resistor a link in the description for these resistors. They're cement resistors, pretty cool. I bought a pack of five of them, they were really cheap. Um, so I have the F45 suspension. This is a 1997 Corvette and I have the F45 suspension kit on this car. The, I believe the other suspension kit is the F55 and that's more common. I think it's a higher trim package for this car and it's maybe standard in the newer Corvettes, the C5 Corvettes. You guys know more about that than I do. So that means in order to fix that speed limit and all those errors, I can put a resistor in place of that module that was controlling the Magna Ride suspension. The wires plug right in and then originally the end of the wire would plug into the module on the bottom of the, the strut for the Magna Ride. But that's not there anymore because we have these beautiful BC coils. So I did a little test run and I put resistors on all four wheels. You can see I have one there, and if you look closely, I have one on the other side as well. So I did a little test run here, and the resistors worked. Shout out to the Corvette forums, they were right. So now that I know that it works, I bought some hose, some adhesive caulk, and I got my solder gun out, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, because it's a cement resistor. It's, cement is very brittle, it will break. So I am going to shove it inside this hose, boop, just like that. And then I'm going to use a little bit of adhesive caulk on the ends to seal it up, make it watertight. And then I will be able to put that back in there. So regardless of how much vibration 
the system sees those resistors won't break over time and I'll be good to go. So if you guys own a C5 Corvette of an early generation or you know that you have the F45 suspension package, those resistors will do the trick and they will fix all your problems and you can go over 80 miles an hour again. So let's do some soldering. Well, here these beauties are. I got the resistors in the protect in the protective rubber hose and they're ready to be plugged back into the chassis. So let's install those back into the car, get the wheels on it, lower it, and then we'll see what the new ride height or the new ride height settings look like. guys hopefully those last couple shots give you a good idea of what your c5 corvette will look like on bc coilovers again just to reiterate i have the rear up about a quarter of an inch from the lowest setting and then i have the front at the lowest setting of the coilover so if you guys decide to get bc coilovers this is what to expect I drove it around a little bit more and I think I'm gonna leave the rear where it's at. It is still rubbing a little bit if I hit a big pothole. So I think instead of raising it more, I'm just going to change the string rate. I'm gonna make the rear a little bit stiffer. Other than that, I'm super happy with the coilovers. I think the car looks really, really good and I'm excited to take it on track and see how well it performs. If you guys have any questions, be sure to comment them below or email us. I will answer every single one of them. Hopefully this video helps one of you guys make a decision in your coilover pick. Like always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It lets us know that you guys like the videos we're making and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.